A Fox News alert, New York City targeted 29 victims injured in a deafening explosion as the NYPD investigates a second device just four blocks away. Some of the big questions this morning, how sophisticated was this device and how are police moving forward with this critical investigation? Our law enforcement panel is here, live former NYPD commander Joe Cardinale, former intel officer for the FBI Joint Terror Task Force Steve Rogers, and former New York Homeland Security Director Michael Balboni. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, all of you. Joe, I want to start with you. Mayor de Blasio immediately came out last night, just moments after all of this was playing out, but before we found out about the pressure cooker and said, this is not terror. Smart? I, I, I think you should call it what it is. I mean, look at the definition of terror. I mean, it falls right into the very definition, which has been enhanced over the years. But it's terrorism. It, it's, it's terrorism at, at its uh, very core. And I'd like to know what intentional as opposed to what? Accidental? Mm -hmm. I mean, this was intentionally placed there, so that's the best you can come up with is intentional. I mean, uh, come out with it and say what it is. New Yorkers want to hear that. They don't want to hear the sugarcoating. And Steve, as investigators wake up this morning, city on high alert, uh, and the country, frankly, potentially on high alert because in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, not far from here, there was a pipe bomb found on the side of a race that thankfully had not started yet, just yesterday. Uh, and we have this mass, uh, several people stabbed, eight people at a mall in Minnesota as a man shouts Allah Akbar. What are investigators, what's going through their mind this morning? Well, to begin with, Ed, this was clearly a terrorist attack. Make no mistake about that. The question that remains that to be answered is, is there an international connection? Mm -hmm. We've said all along, we've said it for a few years, that the battlefield is no longer in the Middle East. The battlefield is being brought right here on the streets of our cities. And investigators right now are going to do a lot of forensic work, and they're going to find out where the bomb-making material was made. Is there a connection to Seaside, New Jersey? Jersey, and are these two connected here in New York City? And Michael, how do you do that? One of the people in the middle of all of this, because we don't want to jump to the conclusion that it is related. Uh, Steve's right that this is still very early in the investigation. But you have a new commissioner here in New York mm -hmm. City. He wakes up this morning, day two as commissioner, because Bill Bratton just stepped down. Right. What's going through his mind this morning? So obviously he's going to have tremendous pressure from the mayor to, to perform. The good news is, of course, that his infrastructure, the Joint Terrorism Task Force, all the different things that are out there that have been feeding information are still in place and still working. So he's got to let them do their job. What's really important here, though, is to let the investigation take you where it takes you. You can't presume that anything's necessarily connected, but there are so many different elements of this that look like the other Boston Marathon bombing pressure cooker mm -hmm. inspire magazine build a pressure cooker you know the bombing in seaside heights targeting military there have been 20 plots since 2001 for New York City to have some element mm. well these fit into all of those categories Joe uh, we had uh, the former New York City police commissioner Bernie Carrick on a few moments ago and he said he's confident that because of the resources uh, that Michael's talking about right there and the know-how uh, and this awesome NYPD we have here on the ground, that we're going to know a lot more, maybe uh, have this investigation, get to the bottom of it in the next 24 hours. Are you confident of that as well? I think he's correct. The, the investigation is going to go in the direction that, you know, they're going to uh, analyze all the uh, pieces of the first bomb and the pressure cooker, and they're going to see if it ties into anything. I mean, it could be some physical evidence on there. I don't think you're going to see them come right out with uh, anything until... They are sure about it, number one. And number two, they might want to hold back something else in case there's other things going on that they don't want anybody to know about that they have to have the element of surprise on this. But, side. Steve, how can investigators be that confident this morning when we don't even have a suspect yet? Well, they're going to, I believe that they're going to have a suspect soon. As Bernie said, we have the greatest law enforcement resources in the world right here in New York City. But Ed, we need to get back to a very important point. Mm -hmm. We have to get out of this mode of denial that we're at war. I mean, the White House has to step up and they have to absolutely say we're at war, whether it be Islamic terrorists, domestic terrorists, but we are at war with terrorism. And uh, interesting enough, Donald Trump did come out and call this what it was, and it was a bombing. That's leadership. That's standing up and telling it like it is. We need the White House to do that. And then you'll have a ripple effect all the way down to local law enforcement agencies, and we will know exactly where we stand. Now, in fairness, Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State, did call it a bombing, but hours after Donald Trump did, and hours after a bunch of people in the media, social media, 
were trashing Donald Trump, saying, why is he calling it a bombing? We don't know that. Let's put to rest the political correctness. We need leaders to stand up and to have the courage to tell it like it is. So, so, so one of the things that people don't necessarily appreciate is that you don't always find the people who commit these things. In 2007, you had the bombing of the Times Square military recruiting station. Never found that guy. So we, there's going to be tremendous pressure to take a look at the videos, to try to take a look at the eyewitnesses, to see if you can find what's out there. But the big concern right now in the city is you wake up, are there other devices? Is mm. there is this a broader plot? That's where the investigation is really focusing on right and now. And Joe, we got 30 seconds, but uh, I saw a lot of people on social media last night when it appeared like initially there were injuries, uh, but fortunately nobody was killed. There were fears that this is a diversion. You know, you put a bomb in a dumpster on 23rd Street, all the police and fire go running. I saw the sirens, they were screaming uh, through the streets of New York City, and then there's something else in the city. That's very difficult to get a handle of when all the resources go to one spot. This is a big city. That's one of the biggest ruses that's been going on for years. It's not just with this. Police calls every day. They want to commit a crime someplace else. They'll mm. call the police attention to one area, and then they'll go do it someplace else. Thankfully, that did not happen here. And the search will continue for the suspect and other devices, and they'll just put every piece together, and it just goes into, a, you know, into the, uh, the database that they'll, they'll need in the future you know, to counteract these things. Joe, Steve, Michael, we're very fortunate to have all of your insights this morning. Thanks for joining us live. Thank you. Thank you. Back to Abby.